In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the two trees, TS3, laser engraver and cutter, and talk about which is probably the most obvious difference of all the other ones, the fact that it actually comes with an enclosure. All right, welcome back to the shop. My name is Brandon, where we do lots of these reviews. And here at the Make or Break shop, the goal with all of these reviews is to figure out where these machines break so that you can spend your time making. So right off the bat, probably the biggest caveat I would say with this machine is the fact that it is a Kickstarter unit. I know Kickstarter reviews can be pretty controversial because we don't know if these things are actually going to ship. On the positive side of things, Two Trees actually has made and shipped products before. In fact, they already have a laser engraver, the TT 5.5S and the 5.5. Those are a lower wattage diode laser, and it's really similar to what you've seen from Otour, Adam Stack, Niji, all those other ones that are out there. But this one is very unique in the fact that it actually comes with an entire enclosure. So it's almost like you're getting some of the benefits of a CO2 laser, which always come with an enclosure, but you have a diode machine that is inside, which makes the price of this a good bit cheaper. And if you do wanna see the updated price, make sure and click the link down in the description. The Kickstarter is probably over, so you wanna see whatever the updated pricing is once they start to sell. Some quick stats, this is a 10 watt laser diode where you basically have two five watt diodes that are focused together to make that 10 watt beam. The max speed is 10,000 millimeters per minute and it's all driven by belts and rollers on both the X axis as well as the Y axis. Some of the other machines actually have linear rails, especially along the X axis, um, but this one is pretty basic in terms of that. One nice thing about this is you can actually remove this honeycomb bed, which comes standard with the machine, and then you can install a rotary attachment underneath, and then you still have plenty of room to put in your material. Now this enclosure is a major plus for two big reasons. First is for dust and fume control. It actually has fans built in and you have a couple different options. You can either vent it out the back or you can opt for a filter, which is this carbon filter in the back, and that will filter out the majority of your air. Now I did notice while I was running, um, this isn't like airtight. And so smoke and fumes will definitely get outside. So you still wanna put this in an open air environment. And if I did actually have the exhaust ducted out instead, I think the smoke and the fumes would be even less. But the second big benefit of having an enclosure is the fact that you're going to save your eyes because this filtered acrylic is basically the same stuff that you would have in safety goggles. So that will actually filter out a lot of the harmful light. But like with all of these machines, I always recommend still wearing safety glasses just in case. Now the big drawback to this enclosure is that you are limited in size. The overall work area is 300 by 200 millimeters and that's a good deal smaller than the engravers that are just a frame. Those are normally in the range of 400 by 400 millimeters. So your actual usable area is going to be a good bit smaller. Also, it's a pretty tight fit. I did notice when I was especially running it to the back, it would sometimes catch on the lid and you can even tell the screws they use, they had to cut off the tops so that it could make that clearance. Now it does have two limit switches. One is right here on the left side of the X axis and the other one is in the back of the right Y axis. And these are a little bit nicer than your simple mechanical switch. I think they're like induction, proximity sensors. So then when it gets close and actually has contact, it actually triggers that sensor. And the sensors are great in general because it allows you to home the machine so you can always get back to the same spot you were in case the power shuts off or something weird happens with the machine. And speaking of the machine turning off, this actually has flame detection, which will kill the power to the laser. And there's an alarm here on the right side that will audibly beep when that goes off. That also happens if the machine detects a collision or an error in any way, you'll hear that audible alarm, which is nice. Now, a lot of companies will say they have a flame sensor, but you can see here, I am lighting a paper towel on fire. I'm putting it right next to the sensor and it does kill the beam and it triggers that alarm. Now, from what I can tell, this doesn't have a motion sensor. So you can tilt this or move this around and it's still gonna continue running. That is one safety feature other companies will add in. So you have a little gyroscope in there that will trigger it. But normally you're really not moving these things around anyway. And hopefully that won't be much of an issue for you. And another unique feature about this unit is that you have a color touch screen right here that gives you basic machine controls. This gives you the ability to jog the laser. You can also test fire the laser to see where everything is pointing. And it also has a micro USB slot and you can run files directly from that USB from your system. So you really don't even need to connect this to a computer to use it. You can just load everything up you need onto that card and then run it directly from the controller. But you do have several other ways to control it. First off is the one that I use the most and that is just directly over USB. You have a USB cable right here and you can plug that to a Mac 
or a PC. This is Lightburn compatible. So that is the software that I love to use. It is paid, but it does an amazing job. And there's other free options out there if you don't want to go that route. But Two Trees also lets you connect this over Wi-Fi. So you connect it to your router from the machine and it gives you an IP address. And then with that IP address, you can control it directly through a web browser, but you can also control it through an app. So I played around with it a little bit on my phone. Again, those controls are pretty simple. It's basically everything it gives you right here on the controller, but it also gives you the ability to upload an image or draw something super simple, then send it to the machine. It'll store it locally and then you can run it from there. Now let's actually talk about the engraving and cutting performance. Right off the bat, one thing you're gonna have to do is focus the laser diode. And this one is pretty easy. There is a screw at the top and you can screw it up and screw it down and that will adjust the distance of the laser diode. And then to figure out the distance, they provide this spacer that you just put right underneath it on top of your material and then you'll screw this down. This is nearly identical to the method that Otour uses. My favorite is still the MakeBlock D1, which has a spacer that is directly integrated into the laser diode rig itself, but it's also not the worst, which usually involves you unscrewing something, dropping it, and then screwing it back in with a Allen key. Now with these machines, I don't do a ton of example tests, because really at the end of the day, the performance of the diode is mostly the same. A lot of the differences between the companies you're gonna find in what surrounds it, and this one is the biggest example of that in that it it has the whole enclosure, the touch screen, the Wi-Fi, the ability to add a rotary underneath this honeycomb bed that pulls out. There's a lot of great features that come with it. But one test I definitely like to do is just a general performance test. And to do that, I'll run several tests on three millimeter birch plywood. Now I'll compare this directly to the Niji 2S4640, which right now is the highest performing diode laser that I've been able to test. On the engraving test, it pairs pretty close. On the Niji unit, you are getting some markings at the 10% power and higher up on the speed. And then in general on the cutting, both in EG, you are getting cutouts at higher speed and lower power than this unit. But if you compare this with the Atom Stack X7 Pro, they line up almost identical with a slight edge going to the two trees. And if you wanna see how a 10 watt unit compares to a 5.5 watt unit, this is the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And you can see this unit's cutting performance is a great deal stronger than Otour. But again, that is with a laser diode that is nearly half the strength. Now, another test I like to do is to figure out the space of the laser dot. They claim this is a 0 0.08 by 0 0.08 millimeter laser dot. And I test that by taking one of the line marks from my other test files, to put it underneath a video microscope, then I'm able to take a picture. And we'll jump into those results right now. Okay, so we brought those images into the computer. So these are the horizontal lines that we're making up the line interval test. And I took the lowest power one because usually that has the smallest diameter and if we bring this ruler over each of these big tick marks that is 0.1 millimeters so we can see we're around uh, 0.12 or so and there probably are some sections that would get down pretty close to 0.1 so like right there we're really close to 0.1 but I'm probably gonna call this like 0.12 two and if we flip over to the horizontal um, we actually see that the laser dot is not square uh, let's see about right there or so we're at 0.15 and it definitely gets a good bit bigger we get almost all the way up to 0.25 yeah we'll probably stick with 0.15 there uh, and it gets pretty small so about 0.15 0.17 somewhere in that range and so if we compare this to the other machines it's actually going to do pretty well it's not going to be quite as small as the atom stack x7 pro which is 0 0.08 by 0.1 zero, um, but we're in the range of the laser pecker, and then it's smaller than Otour, or even Niji, which is the really high power laser module. Now I've added one new test right here, which is just another version of the cut test, but this gives you a bigger range. Now we're going from 50 all the way to 500 millimeters per minute, and on the power, we're going from 10 to 100 in 10% increments. And I was trying to see kind of the point where you would stop being able to cut with just one pass. So when we're running it the slowest, so at 50, that's going to be at 40%, you're still gonna be able to cut, so 40% power. And it goes up more or less in a constant diagonal with the max speed at 100% power being 200. So you're able to cut something out at 200 millimeters per minute at 100% power, which is pretty nice. But once you get above 200, you're not gonna be able to cut anything out unless you start using multiple passes. Now, if you wanna use these files to test out your laser, there is a link down below. And you'll actually download a Lightburn file, so you'll need to run it through there but that's gonna automatically bring in all the cut and the speed settings for you. 
And you might not be comparing multiple lasers to each other, but you are going to be using multiple materials. And right here is a full list of all the different materials that you use. And with these materials, I always recommend running the test file, whether that's the engraving test file or the cutting or both. So at that point, you're gonna be able to see what's the best setting for your machine with the material in your specific location. Sometimes the temperature and humidity can change things. So you're gonna be able to see what's gonna give you the best result and then you can run it. So even though these take a little bit of time to run, in the end, you'll have something you can always reference in the future, they'll be able to save you time. Overall, what are the pros and drawbacks to the machine? Obviously, the biggest pro is that this comes with a metal enclosure that has an acrylic tinted lid that's gonna be able to block a good bit of the light that is coming out. And the ability to run directly from the machine itself is super nice, as well as the ability to connect it to a computer. Or over Wi-Fi, you can run it from an app or a web interface. And another nice thing about the enclosure is it gives you the ability to have dust extraction going out the back so they have a built-in fan. Or you can have an integrated air filter that will filter out the majority of the smoke and dust for you. And I do like that the overall diode is raised up and you can drop in a rotary attachment underneath it because this bed is removable. Because with those other machines, you would have to raise the machine up, whether those are on extension feet, which is what some machines provide, or sometimes in my case, I'll just stack it on a bunch of blocks of wood to be able to get enough room underneath to where I can use the rotary. And obviously that is not the most stable. So having all of that built directly into the machine is really nice. Now the drawbacks of the machine are all because of this metal enclosure, with a big one being that your overall work area is a good bit smaller. And in general, with the fit and the finish of this machine, it just, everything just feels really tight. And I've found, especially in the back, some things can get caught. Now there's not an integrated air assist. It's always the second thing that I wish diode laser companies would provide. Now it would be pretty easy to retrofit this with some of the cheaper kits that are out there, but you're still gonna have to hook up an air compressor. You're gonna have to route the airline to the diode. You have to take into account that it's an enclosure. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger deal than if you were doing that to one of the open air machines. Now comparing this to something from Otour or Atomstack or Niji, again, the big difference is the fact that this has an enclosure. And if you need a really big work area, you'll definitely want to go that route. But if you like the idea of having everything self-contained, it's a little more protected, you're going to be able to do more stuff with the smoke to get it out of your work area. This could be a good option. And again, maybe the biggest drawback is the fact that this is currently a Kickstarter. Definitely purchase at your own risk. Two Trees does have a history of actually shipping units, including other laser engravers. So that's a plus. But just know there's always a chance the Kickstarters might not ship. Now we've talked about several other laser diodes and I've put together a playlist of all of those different reviews if you want to compare and contrast it to this unit. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.